Tonight on Nate News Watch. The federal budget provides funding for transit and affordable housing, but fewer EI benefits for Edmontonians. If our numbers uh, shift, uh, if the economy deteriorates, that we would become eligible. Delays on the development of Blatchford land leave Nate students wondering if they'll ever see a student Maybe residence. Like a five, ten minute walk versus a two hour drive, so it'd save a lot of money on gas. Parents of local students traveling abroad are raising safety concerns after the terrorist attacks in Brussels. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. City Council is delaying development of Blatchford, also known as the City Centre Airport. This could affect future and current Nate students as there were plans of developing a student residence as part of the Blatchford community. Nate is among the largest polytechnics in Canada that does not have a campus residence and it looks like things won't be changing for another year. Our Bailey Nitty joins us live from our news centre with more on that story. That's right, for many students that are not from Edmonton or can't live at home while they're studying, it can be very difficult to find a place to live or even afford one. Many universities and colleges have a student residence, but Nate is not one of those. Curtis Donald, a fifth year business student, has been driving to and from Legal, Alberta every single day in order to get his education at Nate. He says he would have benefited greatly from having a student residence on campus. I have maybe like a five, ten minute walk versus a two hour drive, so it would save a lot of money on gas. Um, might not even need a vehicle. Curtis says that they should have started developing a student housing plan a long time ago, but for him, it's far too late. Nate's student body president, Justin Nan, says that student housing is top priority and the last thing they would want is for somebody to not come to Nate because of the housing issue. The thing that's really missing, and to my knowledge, we are the only polytechnic in Canada that doesn't have a residency and one of the biggest schools in Alberta that doesn't have a residency. This prevents a lot of students from coming here because they don't have a place to stay that they can call their own. When the city gives the go-ahead, Blatchford will be home to up to 30,000 Edmontonians. The sustainable community will be one that uses 100% renewable energy. If development goes as planned, there will be two residence buildings with 700 beds in each. Nate is also hoping that beyond just a residence, that the campus will also expand. People come to campus and then they leave. Mm -hmm. This affects the student experience, whether it's co-curricular or extracurricular. And having students that stay on campus builds a sense of community. This is evident. In the Blatchford design, it states that 20% of the housing will be affordable housing, which is a residence for Nate, and will also have excellent access to LRT and bus stops. Bailey, what are some options as of right now for students who are looking for a place to live while attending Nate? This year, Nate started something called the Trading Post, where they help uh, students find a roommate or a place to stay. If students are lucky, they are also able to stay at the McEwen residence or find an apartment nearby. How much will it cost for a student to live in the Blatchford residence? As of right now, there are no exact estimates, but if you look around the city and look around the province, there are many universities and colleges uh, that students pay in between $600 and $1,000 a month, depending on what the residence has to offer. Thanks, Bailey. That's Bailey Nitty reporting live from our news center tonight. Nate News Watch, the next generation of news. The world was rocked this past week in the wake of the terrorist attacks in Belgium. It was pandemonium in Brussels Wednesday morning after bombs went off at the Brussels airport and a subway car. The blasts claimed the lives of more than 30 people and left hundreds more wounded. The effects of this attack are being felt around the world, including Edmonton. A number of high school students are leaving on international trips soon, and some are wondering if it's the safest idea. Elk Island Catholic School Superintendent Michael Hopton says they've spoken to parents about these concerns. What we're hearing from our parents is, you do your due diligence, you follow up with the Canadian government, you keep things at a, on a daily basis evaluating the situation for our students and we're accepting the fact that to live in this world today there is some element of risk. Hoptman also said that while all current international trips will continue as planned he will not be approving any trips for next year at this time. Mayor Don Iveson discussed the new federal budget this Tuesday. 
Increased spending on infrastructure and affordable housing were welcome news on the budget announcement. Edmontonians' lack of access to improved unemployment benefits, however, was met with unease. I can surmise that it has something to do with the fact that uh, our employment numbers are a little bit better than the rest of the province. Um, I will want to get confirmation that if our numbers uh, shift, uh, if the economy deteriorates, that we would become eligible. Both the Mayor and the Premier have been asking why Edmonton was excluded from the improved employment insurance benefits. Upon questioning, Justin Trudeau stated that the government is responding to the areas that have been hit the hardest. Edmonton police are working with residents to improve the reputation of 118th Avenue. The EPS has begun a community initiative to clean up the area along Alberta Avenue called the Community Empowerment Project. It aims to help curb what the EPS calls preventative crime. In order to do so, the project wants to educate citizens on the types of crime that occur in their area and what they can do to prevent it. The Alberta Avenue Community League hosted its first meeting on March 17th and Constable Jeff Thompson wants the people to know that they can help out. So getting the community to understand the idea that the neighborhoods that are actually or have lower crime rates are the communities that are more engaged, connected and educated. Alberta Avenue is only the first neighborhood to undergo this program. The EPS hopes to secure funding to move forward to have up to six other communities in the project, including Westwood and Spruce Avenue. Community members met at a public workshop at Oliver School this week to help decide on the development of Jasper Ave. Imagine Jasper Ave is a project designed to increase public involvement in the future of Jasper Ave. Ideas for future development include increasing landscaping and greenery, improving accessibility for persons with disabilities, and providing larger sidewalks for pedestrians. Uh, this evening we will be sharing uh, the vision, what we heard from uh, the first public event about Imagine Jasper Avenue project. And we will be making uh, sure like uh, we heard it right from public and uh, confirming them with uh, tonight. As well as building the capacity and understanding uh, how the trade-offs will be working. And Once the Jasper Avenue concept plan is finalized, it will undergo preliminary design before road reconstruction starts in 2018. For more information, check out edmonton.ca slash imagine Jasper Avenue. Two community arenas are being closed for repairs, leaving young hockey players in the lurch. <laughs> Castle Downs Arena is one of many Edmonton hockey arenas set to close for repairs this year. In November, the Donnan Arena is closing for major upgrades. The shutdown would happen in the midst of hockey season, which leaves many young players with one less place to have their games. I know that there are a lot of children, young adults that use the arena. The cars around here, it's packed all the time. In the meantime, ice time on the other arenas in the city will be divided to accommodate games. Repairs on the Castle Downs Arena are slated to start in April. A locally made prayer rug has been unveiled as a symbol of identity for Muslims in Edmonton. The Islamic Family and Social Services Association hosted a night to celebrate Canadian Muslim identity. The centerpiece of the night was a woven prayer rug, which was locally designed. The rug contains important symbols of Edmonton and Alberta. The landscape is represented here with the wheat fields at the bottom, mountains behind it, and the lodgepole pine, of course, the tree of Alberta, embroidered in the middle. And then the arch on the outside, we've got the four seasons, and each of those kind of flow into each other. And then we've got the moons at the top, which are characteristic of a lot of prayer rugs, but also this mosque in particular. You can buy a replica of the rug at CanadianPrayerRug.ca. A 65-year-old former bus driver and retiree, Al Wazelinchuk, settled this Tuesday to break a world push-up record. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Al needed over 79 valid knuckle push-ups in the one-minute time limit. Al managed a full 91. He began training in November. His inspiration to break the record came when he saw Edmonton's push-up king, Doug Pruden, attempt it last year. And he did 59 
I think it was in September, I saw it in the sun, and I thought, 59, he's a push -up thing, that's achievable. So I just, the first day I did like 40, 45 without training. The current push-up record is held by American Ron Cooper. Al's attempt will be verified before it can take its place in the record books. Western Canada's largest indoor playground has opened in Edmonton. All Stars is a family-owned playland aimed at providing a larger-than-life experience for kids. Featuring gigantic climbing structures, an arcade, and a zip line, All Stars is well-equipped for the task. Playland is one of the largest playlands in Canada. We have a 125-foot zip. We have trampolines, computers, an adult area, um, cafe, full-service cafe, as well as this lovely play structure that is tall enough for adults to stand up in. The state-of-the-art facility encourages kids of all ages to develop physical, motor, and social skills. Coming up after the break, we will take a look at how Nate can help you with your fitness goals. Nate has a 40-day challenge that allows you to exercise by stepping out of your comfort zone. A variety of ideas so that it's not just about, you know, trying to lose weight, it's about feeling better. Hey, I'm Chelsea Denson and coming up in sports I have the ACAC Men's Hockey Championship game. I have highlights of the AJHL game where the Saints sweep the crew. And for my end zone challenge, will I get Oops volleyball and soccer player Jordan Teleski teach me how to play volleyball. Coming up in weather, we'll be heading back to warmer temperatures for this Easter weekend, so you'll still be able to hide Easter eggs outdoors for your little ones. Stay tuned! It has been a bit cold this week, but I hear it's supposed to be warming up for this weekend. That's nice to hear, especially since it's Easter weekend. Here's Fariel Bashir with more on the weather. Thanks guys, and you're right, it has been cold this week, but with any cold weather, it does come warm weather eventually, and it has for this Easter weekend. So we'll start off south in Calgary, where the cloudiness will increase throughout the day with a low of minus 1 and high plus 12, which is really nice. And there will also be a 60% chance of rain turning into snow in the evening, so look out for that in case you're driving. If you're going to Jasper, it will also be cloudy with a 60% chance of rain and snow, mainly at Marmot Basin with a low of minus 5 and a high of plus 7, with 60% chance of rain and snow as well. But if up in the mountains, it will be about plus 2. If you're heading further north to Fort McMurray, the weather will be a low of minus 7 and a high of plus 4. In our capital city, we're actually sitting a couple degrees higher than usual, with a low of minus 2 and a high of plus 9. There will be a 40% chance of rain mixing into snow in the evening though. The averages for this time of year are a low of minus 4 and a high of plus 6, so we're sitting right above that right now. Our records were plus 15 in 1986 and minus 24 in 1898, which is what we would normally be used to if we didn't have this El Nino winter. So that's your look at weather. Don't forget to go um, Easter egg hunting with your little ones with the warm temperatures outside. Thanks for joining me. Nate News Watch Weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. Nate's students have an opportunity to get into shape and challenge themselves while doing so. Nate's Campus Recreation Center is offering an opportunity to help people in achieving their health and weight loss goals. Our reporter Randy Marie Adams has more on that story. All the reps, Fred, all the reps. Come on. Let's get some screaming. Come on. It takes four weeks for your body to adapt to new changes when it comes to exercise and diet. It takes another four weeks for you and others to really see a difference. I think um, our society right now is uh, very sitting focused. So we sit at our desk all day or we sit in a classroom all day. Then we go home and we're sitting around doing homework or watching TV. Um, we do a lot of stationary things and that is causing a lot of chronic health issues. The 40-day challenge gives people the chance to try out different classes, step a bit out of their comfort zone, and also educate themselves on a variety of different topics, like proper foods and general wellness. So, um, in addition to supporting the campus rec activities here at Nate, I felt it would be great to maintain a balance of 
of uh, work as well as lifestyle. So I wanted to get out of the classroom and just be more active, be more healthy. Um, have Students often lead fairly stationary lives, whether it be sitting in class or hunched over books and studying. But with this 40-day challenge, you'll have access to the facility, all of its classes, and trainers and dietitians to create something that'll work for you. For Nate Newswatch, I'm Randy Marie Adams. This week in sports, the CCFR was in town and a big payoff for our Nadukes. Yeah, the men's hockey team ended their perfect season 36-0, and just the way it should be. Right, Chels? That's right. I totally agree <laughs> on that because they went the whole season without losing a single game and it would have been devastating to see them lose the championship game. Within the time frame of the Nadukes being a hockey team to now, the men's team has won 15 ACAC championships, and last weekend they added another one to the list. First period of the game, Corey Kislowski will find Gale wide open, and Gale will knock it in glove side and put the Vikings up 1 0 on the Ukes. Four minutes later, Trey Selson comes down far side, finding Dunkel, who will backhand it into the net to knock the game at 1. Skipping to the third period now with four minutes left on the clock, Clark, Clark Wilson will put the puck on net and scramble in front of the net and Jordan Wood will tap it in over the line to put the Nadukes up 3-2 on the Vikings. Wakeland will try to fire the net, but the buzzer will go and that's it. The Nadukes will do it again. Back to back Ch ACAC championship win. The Nadukes will take this game with a 3-2 victory over Augustana. And now Captain Scott Feldermeyer with his thoughts on the game. We were focused on our good habits early on in the year and stuck with it. A lot of good character guys along with the skill we had and, and uh, can't really explain it. <laughs> in the AJHL playoffs, the third place Spruce Grove Saints played the fourth place Sherwood Park Crusaders. This was a game of three of a best of seven second round matchup. The Saints came into play and right off the get go, 5'11 Brandon Byro flies right past the Cruz D, backhanded in for an easy first goal of the game. Moving on to the second period, Brandon Byro again with a blind shot on net, which will find its way to the back of the net, and that'll make the game 4-1 for the Saints. The crew getting a little uh, feisty, not knowing like in the outcome of the game. With 10 minutes left to play, Colton Leader will go to top shelf for his first goal of the evening. And that goal finished the game off 7-3 for the Saints. The Saints swept the crew three games to zero, and they'll move on to play the Lloyd Minster Bobcats in the AJHL North Division Finals. It's never easy in the playoffs to score goals, and, and you know we've been able to do that. And I mean, everybody's pitching in, and it's not just a couple guys. I mean, all 20 guys in the lineup are contributing, and, and that's huge for us. Uh, you know. The contestants came from universities and colleges all around Canada to compete in the 2016 Canadian Finals Rodeo. The three contestants were from Nate. Riley Boris, a Nate welding student, isn't your typical Nate student. Boris is sweeping the board in the bareback riding rodeo event. In the ride this past weekend, he tied for the win with a score of 72 points. I was really happy. My horse came out there and fired out pretty hard and everything just kind of clicked pretty good. Got away on me on a couple, but uh, we got back there and made it work. Boris ended up taking second place in the bareback riding event and the seats were packed and the rodeo clowns were dishing out shirts and candy as much as they could and it made for a very entertaining weekend. Okay, so when I was in junior high, I used to play volleyball. And when I say that I used to play volleyball, I'm not inferring that I was any good, but I was on the team. So for my end zone challenge this week, I figured I'd see if I uh, retained any of the so-called skills that I may have had. Yeah, about that. I figured we'd start off with some overhand serving, so with a little guidance, I jumped right in. Right into the camera. Jordan quickly decided I needed a few more pointers before we continued, or wrecked the camera. At least I have supportive friends. Go. Oh, <laughs> I can't. There it is. Oh. No! <laughs> oh. 
Maybe this is harder than I thought. Okay, I'm over it. We moved on to passing after. Passing was more my forte, and my form wasn't too bad. My coach calls it the burrito stance. So if you're eating a burrito, you don't want it on you because you're going to get it all over yourself. You want it out here. Kind of makes sense, right? <laughs> Bump. Set. I'll take it. Maybe I'm still a little bit of a chicken. But I'll just take my frustrations out on the ball. I thought you said you used to play volleyball. Okay, I did used to play volleyball, but I told you that didn't mean I was any good. Jordan kind of helped me dust off a few cobwebs, but I don't think that changed anything. <laughs> You're going to have a couple of nice bruisers on your arms, eh, Chels? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Chelsea. Coming up after the break, uh, Maddie and I head down to Canadian Blood Services to donate blood. It was my very first time donating, and it was a very eye-opening experience. Oh, I'm so excited. The need for blood is constant. Every 60 seconds in Canada, somebody needs blood or a blood product. Hi, I'm Nathan Spence, and this week in entertainment, I check out the new Sherlock Holmes exhibit at the TELUS World of Science, and I also head down to a local greenhouse to get a preview of the upcoming Orchid Fair. Stay tuned. Clothing sponsored by Elite Sportswear, bringing you 60 years of dedication. Hair sponsored by Rock Salon and Spa. This week, Maddie and I made our way to the University of Alberta Blood Clinic to donate. I was a little bit nervous at first, but looking back, I'm glad we went through with it. A victim of a serious car crash can require as many as 10 units of blood to survive. Whereas a person with leukemia can require eight donors a week during treatment. Canadian Blood Services is tasked with making sure their blood bank is filled. Well, the need for blood is constant. Every 60 seconds in Canada, somebody needs blood or a blood product. We don't know how much they need or why they need it. We just know that they do need it. So we're constantly looking for new donors to come out and uh, give that gift of life and hopefully make an impact on a patient in need. If you're interested in donating blood or just curious about the process, feel free to check out CanadianBloodServices.ca. It's a great time to get out and enjoy different things in our city. Absolutely. I hear there's an interesting Sherlock Holmes exhibit at the Telescience Centre, but our Nathan Spence can tell us more about that in entertainment. Thanks guys, and yes, the game is officially afoot at the TELUS World of Science. The international exhibit of Sherlock Holmes kicked off its only Canadian stop right here in our city on Friday. And whether you're a fan of the books, movies, or even just science in general, there's definitely something for everyone to check out. The interactive experience combines science with the rich history and culture surrounding Sherlock Holmes. Guests will take a trip back into the 1800s to help understand what inspired Sir Arthur Conan Doyle to write his stories about the world's most famous detective. And while Sherlock isn't actually at the exhibit, you can still try to help him solve a murder. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Forgive me for not greeting you in person. I require your assistance. To solve the murder, Guests will have to use forensic techniques from the 1800s. This includes analyzing blood spatter at the slaughterhouse. Guests will also have access to Sherlockian tools to help them determine dragging patterns and footprints. You can even test possible poisons in the conservatory. President of the exhibit, Jeffrey Curler, spoke about Sherlock's use of science. You learn about the new technology that was being used in the Victorian age. A lot of this technology is still being used today by forensic scientists. Bigger computers, faster, but it's still the same technology that forensics uh, is based on. So we learn the core of forensic science right here in the exhibition. We use it to help us evaluate a crime scene that's here. There's also a pop oh, culture so section here. showcasing the detective throughout his many adaptations. There's props from the elementary TV show, the Robert Downey Jr. movies, and even a few props from the wildly successful BBC series starring Benedict Cumberbatch. So whether it's the history, pop culture, or even the science, there's something down here for just about everyone. The Sherlock Holmes exhibit will be here until September 15th, so make sure you get down there and help Sherlock solve that murder. Now the third most popular drink in the world after coffee and tea is beer. And with the Edmonton International Beer Festival happening next weekend, I got the underground tap house to help me brush up on my beer education. The underground has over 70 beers on tap. About half of those are brewed right here in Alberta. 
The local theme is very popular amongst beer drinkers and the International Beer Fest will be having even more locally brewed options available. They are introducing a lot more Alberta breweries. I think they have at least six. Um, I know in the past they kind of mixed it up and they had a lot of imports, a lot of different brands, but they definitely have noticed that local is the way to go. Some local beers that will be featured at the festival are the Edmonton Brewed Yellowhead Lager and Alley Cat. The festival will run April 1st to 3rd, and if you're there Sunday, check out the Underground for the official, unofficial after party. Now with spring just around the corner, the flowers are starting to bloom, and so is this year's 39th annual Orchid Fair. I met with the president of the Orchid Society of Alberta to get a sneak peek of this year's fair. Thousands of different plants will be on display, with some actually competing to see which one's prettiest. There will also be a ton of vendors, including ones from Ecuador and Taiwan. But vendors and flowers aren't all that will be there. We have art uh, displays and photography displays. And so uh, and we get a lot of really amazing uh, art pieces, you know, whale paintings, watercolors, etc. of orchids. And uh, a number of really great photographs that, uh, that people enter as well. The fair will also have speakers teaching the basics of orchid gardening and care. The orchid fair runs from April 1st to 3rd at the Enjoy Centre in St. Albert. The UN's International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination took place on Monday and a local group hosted a night of artistry in its honour. The event, called Unpacking Boxes, featured a host of racially diverse artists and speakers. The topics of racism and xenophobia were explored throughout the eyes of First Nations people and immigrants from all over the world. We bring in interdisciplinary artists from all different cultural gender backgrounds and different artistic disciplines including poetry, filmmaking, music, spoken word, visual art. So the goal of the event was to unpack boxes of preconception about race. Among, amongst those invited to speak was Nate's own Aboriginal Centre coordinator, Derek Thunder. That's all I got this week. Uh, I just showed you guys some really awesome stuff to do, so no one should be complaining about any boredom or anything like that. Back to you, Jesse and Maddie. Thanks, Nathan. Man, that Sherlock Holmes thing sounded awesome. Yeah, wicked. I definitely want to go see it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Right, well, that's our show for this week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jesse Setka. I'm Maddie Skinner, and good night.